Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno, where tonight we speak to Rupert Everett about his 10-year labour of love and the making of the Oscar Wilde movie, The Happy Prince. Now, one of the lines of dialogue from Oscar Wilde in the film is, um, never dream, madam, it just might come true. <laughs> and here we are tonight, and your dream, 10-year dream, has come true. It's come true, yeah. Um, uh, so it's absolutely thrilling. Um, it's great to be here opening in London and uh, all over England, and I'm, and I'm really psyched, yeah. When we see Oscar Wilde, it's the last couple of years of his life, he's destitute, yet your portrayal depicts him with such dignity. Was that a difficult balance to, to create? Not really. I never really thought of those kind of things, of balancing. I just I had a notion about the whole story, and, um, and that was it. I, I wasn't really thinking of the, of the balance of anything much. <laughs> You're talking about notion that the story is very much a romantic story. It's a romance, um, and the way that it's shot as well feels with the soft lighting very romantic. Was that something that you always envisioned, or was that your collaboration with the director of photography? Um, I don't know with the romantic. Uh, uh, I think uh, I was I was wanting it to be a little bit jumbled and uh, it's it's a, a romance in a way but it's not a romance in another way because um, it's it, 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 it in one sense the film is um, about demystifying the so-called great love affair of Oscar Wilde with Lord Alfred Douglas because I don't think that was a very great love affair myself I think what was his love affair was between Oscar Wilde and Robbie Ross in a way and Oscar Wilde never knew that and that's where he was such an idiot in, a, in one sense until it was very late when you were studying Oscar Wilde from the kind of the beginning to where you are now, do you have the same kind of respect for the man that you had when you first embarked on this journey? Yeah, I love him. I, but I love him for his human qualities, for all the frailty, for the bad side. I like him just as much. I love him for his vanity, for him being such a mad big star when he was a star, not understanding what was going on. I love all, all that about him as well. You've obviously got a great career, but it's your first time as a director. Have you got any advice for any no other advice. filmmakers? No advice. Would you, would you do the same thing again? Um, yes, I would like to, yeah, definitely. No, when you were presented with a script about Oscar Wilde, that we see him kind of on his uppers, really. For an actor to be a part of that kind of storytelling must have been an exciting prospect. Oh, 100%. I mean, any... Any story, any script, any project that's fueled by a passion and a determination and a, and a persistence and, and that has certainly been um, a huge part of what this is, mainly from Rupert himself. To step into that and to feel that and be pulled along by that tide of passion and love is, is amazing and it's inspiring and it fuels you in really creative ways. And we're talking about love and passion, of course, you, you play Bozy, which is the... the the, the partner really to Oscar Wilde and the reason for his downfall. What was it like playing that part and the journey of, of finding more about that person yourself? I mean, Bozy does get a lot of blame. He, 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 does, get, he does get tainted with uh, being a factor in, in, in Oscar's downfall. I think there's many factors and Bozy was definitely present for a lot of them uh, and he certainly didn't help but he did help in a lot of ways and for me I don't think anyone, any person sets out specifically to be the downfall of someone and so for me it was about love, it was about the love of Oscar that was um, unfortunately a, tra a tragedy. There is no, there is no ironically happy characters left at the end of this story, they're all tragic people. There's such a physical transformation for you within the film. Did that help you as well, inform you? Did you, did you have a wig on or did you dye your hair? Yeah, I mean, it's a, a transformation for an actor is a dream come true. And you, you can only ever do an internal transformation yourself and, and, and trust that. But you rely on a very talented, dedicated team of makeup artists and costume designers to help you. We all work together. It's a creation. It's a collaborative creation. And it would be foolish to ignore that. It's, it's, it's a team effort. I'm, I'm really humbled actually and really Rupert's worked on this film for 10 years and it's so close to his heart, it's become very close to mine. We've got an amazing team of producers and uh, we've all worked really hard on it and it's a special moment, yeah, yeah, it's really wonderful. What we've got here is a, an unconventional love story really yes. between, you know, your character Robbie and Oscar Wilde. Um, can you tell us more about the journey that you went on to discover Robbie? Yeah, I spoke to his biographer, Jonathan Fryer, on the on Skype late at night a little bit. I spoke to friends who 
knew about. I came on board quite late, just before filming, so I had a lot of dive in the deep end. I felt the weight often of playing somebody who was so complex and so real, n not many people know about in the way they do when, when they know about Bozy. So I felt a lot of um, just kind of like internal pressure to represent a man who was li who lies next to Oscar. His ashes are next to Oscar in Père Lachaise in France, and so moving to play to play somebody who had such an important role in Wilde's life. And actually, the legacy because they're they're together for eternity. Oh, you couldn't put it back. Yeah, yeah, it makes me cry. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've interviewed a lot. So sweet. Yeah, it's like, what more can? That's really, really great point. Yeah. What no, no, you you're working with Rupert, who this has been such a labour of love for him. So when you've got somebody who has written, directed it, and is also starring in it as well, um, how does that help inform you with the relationship that you've got with with him as your? kind of scene partner as well as your director. Is it, does that help or...? He makes it, um, he made it, he knew what he wanted from every scene. And so as an actor that can really, you, you can find different ways to get into that scene, but if, if he knows what happened, and, you know, what, what probably would have happened and he, he explains it to us that morning and we have a bit of time to think about how this can really work, including the lighting, including John Conroy, the cinematographer, knew exactly what Rupert wanted as well and soon could find his own way to make this cinematography look so amazing. He facilitated a, a team of people to have an individual forwardness. What a wonderful script this is. It is, well, what, what was your feelings when you first read it? Well, I was told before I read it by Stephen Frears that it was one of the best scripts he'd read in a very long time. So I was very eager indeed when uh, uh, I knew it was on the way to get my hands on it and it's a wonderful script. It really is, and then tell us about the, the character that you're playing, you know, what was it about him that you, you wanted to play the part? Well, I would have wanted to be in the film Whatever Happened, because I've known Rupert since he and I were 14 years old, and we were at school together, and we did, uh, for five years, we, we played two, two plays a term at school together, and um, I don't think I played a male figure till I was 17, so we were leading ladies together. He played the sexy ones, and I played the Mayfair hostesses, and nothing's changed. <laughs> and when you see where, how far Rupert's come, I mean, you, if you've known him for such a long time, you know that this is the labour of love. So it's been a really tough journey for him to get this film made, hasn't it? Well, he's got tremendous loyalty and which is why so many of us who have known him for so long of course not only here but in his film and um, it, 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 he, he always had Wildean qualities I mean he wouldn't have said it but, but we always knew it uh, those of us who have loved him um, for example when we were at school together he built himself a dressing room on the fire escape uh, with fake telephones connected to his agent in LA um, and this was when we were only 14 years old and um, if you were very honored and I was he would invite you into his dressing room and uh, while he was talking to his agent in LA yeah so the star was in the making very early on and, and with regards to the story of Oscar Wilde I mean really this man was, was a, a trailblazer. He probably didn't see himself at the time, but when we think to where we were then, to where we are now, really it, it was, it, with it being so public, Oscar Wilde's disgrace, for want of a better way of putting it, it really did start the kind of the ball rolling for a, a movement, didn't it? Really? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a key point in, his, in British history, uh, of course in global history, but particularly for the British, Oscar Wilde's trial uh, and being called a sodomite uh, 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 is is a very important point in British history. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's te dealt with very um, um, sympathetically here, very isn't moving. it? And moving. Yes, indeed. Yes. I I think too that that what makes Rupert's film relatively unique is that uh, it's not often that. Oscar Wilde's story is, t it's usually the story of Oscar Wilde's brilliance before his fall, but this is after the fall. Uh, this is the disgraced Oscar with little time left, uh, but it's a wonderful piece of work. This is an exquisite script, isn't it? You must have been turning each page. 
Yeah, I mean, when I when I first got it, um, quite a while ago, um, I remember that uh, me and Rupert were talking about it and talking about the story and talking about my part in it and the character and stuff. And then when I eventually got my hands on the script, I remember in my flat reading it and I remember sitting in the living room and it was really late at night and it was kind of like this glow coming in of the street lamp. So I was reading this thing and I just couldn't, I couldn't stop turning the pages and I couldn't believe how beautifully written it was and well measured and the story was just so fantastic and it's one of the few scripts I finished and I thought I've got to read that all over again and then so I, like I stayed up till the early hours and I read it again and I just thought to myself I'm so lucky to be part of this you know the, the part that you're playing you're one of the ex-lovers uh, of aren't you of Oscar Wilde can you tell us a little bit more about that and were you able to actually research the person himself or did you have to just stay to screen uh, no, he's a real person, Maurice Gilbert, yeah, a uh, French Foreign Legion who um, is befriended by Oscar in, in Paris, uh, kind of an, he was an infamous, um, I wouldn't say part, the, the equivalent of a party animal now, you know, there's a lot of drinking and a lot of boisterousness, but I think he is so touched by the way in which Oscar Wilde takes him in and he's so intrigued by him, it's a world that he doesn't really know. You know, he's in the French Foreign Legion, it's tough as nails. And so there's this man that takes him in, it's just fascinating. And then introducing, introduces him to a whole different world. And that was incredible. And it's lovely to actually research a real person um, because it doesn't happen often. So when you get to play a real person, it's really exciting. And was it exciting as well when you're working with Rupert, who really has become an authority, really, isn't he, on Oscar Wilde? Was that a, a real boon for you as an actor and a collaborator? Absolutely. I mean... Um, because I've worked with him before in the theatre, you know, it was a real privilege to, to work with him again. Um, and he had so much energy. I mean, I don't know how he did it, but the amount of energy he had and drive for this project to go forward. Every day on filming, on set, you could just see, and you know, he's in costume, in character, and he's also directing and he's looking at rushes and then he's going in and performing. And that's quite uplifting for the rest of the cast. We just come on and we just got to do our job and act. But um, he has all these other different jobs after filming as well in post. Like it's, in, it's totally uh, unbelievable what he's done. I was just like quite, in, quite incredible. <laughs> incredible. Was that, was that, like a that was a champagne, champagne. yeah. <laughs> Through the roof champagne. <laughs> very Oscar Wilde. Don't love yeah. Wilde. Yeah, very decadent. <laughs> and talking of decadence, I think what this film does as well is it deals with the um, the, the, the uh, sort of homosexuality with with, with um, decency, doesn't it? Really, it's not gratuitous. It doesn't. No, it's it's not it's not gratuitous, but it is raw. I mean, it's not um, it's not looking through um, it with rose-tinted glasses or that kind of lens, which actually, arguably, maybe some incarnations of the Oscar Wilde story do. And it's really nice to uh, be a part of a project which is real and honest. And I think that's what Rupert was going for, is like, we all have facets of ugliness in us. We all do. And, you know, it's important to, to bring that out as well um, at times. And it adds to the depth of the story and the person.